let's continue with it. They have to wrap. Let's go to post production. How much footage do you have? You guys have for editing. How is that process oh, editing? How is that editing Ooh. process, especially for? Yeah, tell me. I can see it. Yeah, yeah. because you guys. Oh, oh. Yeah. You yeah, can the magic, the magic, the magic, because it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful documentary. But I guess it was a, it was hard, right? That process of editing. Please tell hard me. Th hardest, hardest film we ever edited. Definitely. Hardest film mm -hmm. we've ever edited. And I'm gonna say that this version that got distributed and that the sales agent picked up was the tenth version of the mm -hmm. film, the the wow. tenth rough cut. I I remember the film last year. Uh, coming back from our editor, we were very lucky. We have a good editor that we love. We have to also say uh, to Krisha Carter, hey, guys, yes. who is an Emmy Award winner and worked with the, yeah, the BBC, the, worked with the BBC in, in England mm -hmm. for, for many years. I, um, the first three versions, first four versions of the film, I remember showing it to my mom, who is who is a big fan of, of me because she loves me. She has she's my mom. <laughs> she said to me, she's like, you know, Stefano, this movie, it sucks. It's very bad. <laughs> That's when we knew. I was like, oh that my God. Mom. I have to start wow. the film from scratch. And yeah. the, that was wow. a big, big opening moment to realize the documentary needs many things to work and it needs a mm -hmm. storyline and it has to have a through line. Um, I don't know how, I think it took, I don't know how long, over a year to edit. Definitely over a the year. The post-production yeah. took a long time, but it has so many pieces. There's so much footage. How many moving parts there are in I don't, yeah. How much footage do we have? I mean, at least uh, of, of interviews, there's, a inter there's kids that didn't make it into the film, right? There are other mm -hmm. kids. Correct. Are, Another kid who didn't make it into there's, there's maybe two kids who mm -hmm. didn't make it into the film, maybe ten hours of footage, mm -hmm. nine and a half hours of footage, yeah, and you sure. only see thirty. You only see thirty minutes. Documentary yeah, is about correct. thirty minutes, right? right. So mm -hmm. yeah. ten hours. Well, that, ten minutes. Yeah, and be, and because you interview so many kids, obviously you have a large volume of of talking heads too. You have a lot of dialogue in the in the footage. Mm -hmm. and in the finished product too so then it becomes a matter of okay now we have to find the style right. of this film we mm -hmm. have to find the artistic aesthetic value of this project and how to merge that you know so it was a really really intensive involved process post so, so you guys bring me back <laughs> so, to <laughs> you guys uh, trust completely your editor right so you hand the first to to him and then he has to do the first assembly and you guys just start. Oh, no, no. How does it work? Tell me, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're, 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 we're involved. <laughs> no, we're crazy. We need to be <laughs> no, no, no. in we're, that no, 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 no. We need to be in that editing room at all times. No, no, no. Like, wow. Every edit, yeah. <laughs> one of us is in the room with the editor. That's right. That's right. The gotcha. editor for us, yes. part of the contracts that we have with the yeah. editor is that the editor is never alone. Never. Because uh -huh. the editor, you have to trust the editor to do the job. Right. The editor is not going to, you know, I, I, I just, I, I don't want to say this secret publicly, but I'm going to say it anyway, because I like <laughs> Darwin a lot. Not yeah, tell me. To care about the film mm. in the same way That's you awesome. care about the film. Mm. And mm -hmm. so you have to be with the editor and not drive the editor crazy right. so you can let them work but you have to watch also so that you guys can develop a relationship mm -hmm. so that the editor trusts you and the editor says, you know what, Stefano, I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And also the editor will say, Stefano, let this idea go away. Mm -hmm. Let me show you something else and trust me to do that. Right. And so that bond and trust happens over time, but we never hand our films, never. never. To, to anybody and just let them edit our yeah films. exactly mm -hmm. and, and, and just too like you know there's uh, we love to watch footage we love to watch every mm -hmm. piece of every piece that we shot every everything we watch it. um so you always run the risk if an editor is doing it independently that they're not always going to find the right take for something like that that's a magic that is created in the editing room mm -hmm. and that you need to mm -hmm. be present for there's a whole synergy involved in in the creative process um, mm -hmm. so that's why it's more, even more essential, exactly.
Goodness. Exactly. So think mm -hmm. it's even more essential that we're there, that we're there with them. Right. So uh, another question about editing. Uh, when you guys are in the editing room with the editor, uh, how how it changed the documentary? You guys start playing also where to put uh, interviews, B-roll, or you guys have a storyline already laid down? Yeah. How is that process still? It's, it's, yeah, um, it's a good question. I think that, um, okay, I'm gonna answer this in the honest way. Mm -hmm. Some filmmakers love to use the storyline and they can cut in sections. Mm -hmm. In other words, they can say, uh, let's say the film is in 10 chapters and they say, okay, we're gonna work on chapter three, right, right. then we're gonna work on chapter seven. Mm -hmm. I personally, this is where me and Laura complement each other very well. Linear. Laura, yeah. Laura can think of the film much better than me in terms mm -hmm. of uh, number six, number four. Now let's work on number 10. Mm -hmm. um, the ending that Laura worked on in the beginning has never been changed. It's, it's very rarely changed. It's, it's changed. I like to work from minute one to minute two mm -hmm. two minute three yeah, i i i need to see the film linearly because i like mm -hmm. to watch my movies as an audience because mm -hmm. i always ask is it here is it boring do i understand it mm -hmm. and if it's if it's boring no one's gonna watch it if it's clear no one's not gonna if it's not clear no one's gonna watch yeah, it yeah. Mm -hmm. and so i like to watch the film you know sometimes if i'm working for a month um, I can only do three great minutes, mm -hmm. you know, that's it. What do you, how much do you have? I have three and a half, four good minutes, Finding that beginning, but they're yeah. perfect four minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I care more about that. Mm -hmm. And Laura cares about the structure and that's a perfect marriage, sure. perfect marriage. Now, now one thing I think, um, you know, we both kind of knew early on structurally is, mm -hmm. and this pretty much remained consistent, is starting with Jeremy. Yes. So being as personal as possible, putting that spotlight on Jeremy, getting him privately in a room, talking about his vulnerabilities and his insecurities and also his, his hopes and his fears before leading into the other activists. Right, before you know, introducing them. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's always been a consistent kind of lynch point in our in our, yeah, in never, our cuts. That, that never changed. Yeah. How much we were gonna show, right. when, when we were going to right. lead, the kids and, and introduce them yeah but you always start off with jeremy that's right always that's right. we always started off with jeremy yeah right yeah. and then let me trial and error right let me ask you um the final master how you guys decide this that you, that was the final you know documentary that everybody's watching right now is uh, uh, your producers is the feedback how is that work to say this is what we have and this is going out you get feedback you get the producers telling you let's do this let's do that how was that final decision please tell me guys yeah so so exactly right so when we have an edit that we do with the editor usually the night of i get a rendered file yeah. uh, a pretty mm -hmm. you know low res maybe 720 standard def mm -hmm. um even if it's a messy rough assembly of, of a certain mm -hmm. part i usually just take sections yeah those sections i would send off to brandon de los reyes uh, Nolan Kelly, usually those guys, maybe Julia mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And I would even AJ. Yeah. And I would send those things and they would send me notes. Sometimes I agree with those notes. Sometimes I don't, mm -hmm. but at least I know the strengths and the weaknesses of that section. Um, then I sleep on it. We sleep on it. Mm -hmm. And then we come back and we usually take the final decision yeah. with the editor mm -hmm. and if we don't take all the notes of the producers, we explain to them why. Exactly. And usually we have a good relationship of trust where they go, okay. That makes sense. You no, know, we, yeah. we, in our contracts, we always try to write to have final cuts. Some directors, as you move up, when you have, when you do, te when we've done television, yeah, they lose that. Well, we've lost, yeah. we, we, for television, it's not, we don't always have final cut, right? So Unfortunately, that's, right. That's, we don't, you know, we, 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 we try to, but, but um, we try to give advice diplomatically, mm -hmm. 
you know, like, what do we know? We only shot it. Right, exactly. You know, I, you can, you can take someone else's, but, but, but we only shot you know? the film. Yeah. So, you know, what do we know? Vision. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, you try to come up diplomatically, but most of the time we've been very lucky to work with editors, especially on our documentaries mm -hmm. that always give us final cut. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's, that's been at the end of the day, it's the people that you're looking at, that's right, that's right. Laura, that are the ones who, who make, just, the decision. make the decisions. And, yeah. and we, it's rare that we wow. disagree. That's right. And we know, you know, when you know, you know. If you feel it in your heart, it's, it's you feel it. You have to feel it in your it's heart. You gotta, you just yeah, gotta right. love that song. I love that yeah, film. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful answer. It's, guys, tell me the music. The music is beautiful. How the music come along? If that was something in post-production, that was something that you guys thinking before in pre, how is the music, you guys decide the music, the taste? So this yeah. is this is a question. I'm, I'm going to let Laura pick up on this because her, <laughs> the, first, the the music comes from both of us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. We have we have two musical composers on the film. One is Luke Folger, and the other one was 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 for one section, and then for the other section that we really needed in post production mm -hmm. was uh, Bridget um, uh, Bridget's last name Briga. So I, she's from Montreal. She's an amazing, she's an composer. amazing composer. I've known her for a few years. And the first song that we picked was Laura's. Laura had a track that we bought the rights for. Mm -hmm. And she 100%, let's say there's four songs in the documentary. Yeah. I think there's four. Yeah. The first mm -hmm. four song, five. Yeah. four or five, let's mm -hmm. say. The first song was Laura's. That was from the beginning two years ago. She right. said, this, we need this go 100%. Going hardcore, yeah. So we bought the rights. Yeah. We bought the rights. I, hundred percent. We paid for the rights. Mm -hmm. We, we own the, it. Mm -hmm. so we got that for that section. Mm -hmm. Great. Second piece of music was, uh, for, I would say Luke Folger, Luke Folger gave me three pieces of music and he did a film with us on NC. Right. And he said, I know your styles. I know as filmmakers that you are, here are some moody pieces. This is a moody piece for, uh, a hero's journey. This is a part for something light. This is another part for something dramatic. Right. So he gave me maybe five pieces of music and then Laura and I picked a, one song from that. Yeah. So that's our second song. Third song, the editor found. The song from Parkland yeah. in the Parkland shooting clip that I spent a lot of time editing with the editor, which was a lot of the footage that I, I sourced she found a piece of music and that's when we can some someone makes a decision that is not us right and we love it so much and we go you're approved. right approved. approved we're gonna buy the song so that's the song we bought yeah mm -hmm. then we knew we were missing music and that's when we hired bridget on a contract that's and right. she composed we asked her to compose music and we worked out a long process mm -hmm. the first couple tracks that she wrote then then and scored and then recorded we said they're good pieces but they're not good for the film yeah i think we gave her a note mm -hmm. to think along the lines of you too yeah and like I, I think once <laughs> what was it where the streets have no name where the streets right? have the no beginning name. of that song where the streets have no name we, we found like particular resonance with that we were like okay if we could do something as close as possible to this while still keeping your style and all the things we love about you as a composer, then I think we're on the right track. Yeah. And she, she took that note really well. Uh, yeah, we, And that's what you hear in the you, finished product. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Where the streets have no name as a note to her was a big opening yeah. for us, a big thing for us. Yeah. You know, we like, we, we like, homage to you we, we love you too. Yeah. We love, you know, that sound of, it's very uh -huh. hopeful. Yeah. So that was triumphant. A, yeah. Yeah. So the long process for music. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah, me, it's a long process. Yeah, let me ask you: When you guys lay down the music in the in the twenty minute, thirty minutes of a, a documentary, how you guys go with that feeling of knowing where to place the music? Is something in, in, instinctive coming from you, or is something that you go more like methodic? How is how is that moment of placing the music in the documentary, which affects the audience, right, at the time they watch yeah, the? Yeah, for, sure. for sure. I think because the music innately gives you that kind of evocative feeling anyway. It's, it's a very emotional response that you have to music. So mm -hmm. we try to match that feeling as close as possible mm -hmm. to what people would feel when they're watching a film. Like, what do they then want to hear? Right. You know, mm -hmm. so putting yourself from the perspective of the moviegoer and, um, and, and, and laying it out that way emotionally, like paying attention to the emotional beats of the film, 
where the transitions are. And then also how it's going to sound from song to song. Mm -hmm. You have to pay attention to the pattern and the rhythm. Of, mm -hmm. right. You know, if something sounds out of place, then yeah, okay, you got it. Maybe it's not going to work there. It'll work mm -hmm. somewhere else, you know? So how does the whole, how does the whole music sound as a piece? Mm -hmm. I love what Laura just said. Mm -hmm. How does the whole score right. of the whole film work together as a one long unified, piece. unified soundtrack? Yeah. I love that point. And also, does the music match what the kid is saying? Right, right. What is the, what is the idea that the kid is saying, the activist, the youth, the per person that's being interviewed, does it match the, the idea? The message and the intention. But, yeah. but, you know, really Darwin, talking about music is so hard because it's so emotional. Yeah. Um, right. A lot of it is intuitive. Yeah, it is. A lot of it is intuitive. Uh -huh. And, and when you look with Laura and you go, you go, listen, you know, this works for us. Yeah. You know, this works, this, this works, but sometimes it's intuitive and, and, you know, that's why you go, no, this is, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. Doesn't feel right. Yeah. You know? Right. So you guys were expecting all this success from the day I have to grab the guy you guys having right now. What do you, I think you guys were expecting this, right? I can see on your faces. What do you think? <laughs> oh man. I mean, I think, I think some of it's come as a, as a bit of a surprise. I, I, I always knew, I think we always knew that we were doing something very timely. Yes, and that was responding mm -hmm. to the climate in a very, you know, proactive way. Um, but in terms of all the press exposure, I mean, it's like it's super humbling. Just in the past uh -huh. couple of weeks alone, we've, you know, yeah, we're exactly. gonna, um, so I, I mean, even just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still like a little, I'm still surprised in a, in a really positive way, you know. All right, I'm, I'm gonna say yes. I, I, I think we, yeah. we ex you know, I'm gonna say yes because. <laughs> We try to make great films yeah. and we put our lives in it. You know, we, mm. we spend, like sweat and tears. we spend, we're workaholics. We're, um, you know, we don't have children. We don't have, uh, um, we don't have a lot of the external things that are distractions yeah. mm -hmm. and it's not by accident. Uh, our lives are designed that way because we want to work. We've always made commitment to ourselves Very conscious decision. to make work the most important thing that you're yeah. creating something. And, you know, it's like being an athlete. If you commit like Ronaldo to, to, to working out every day and working on corner kicks and working on, you mm -hmm. know, how you're going right. to pass and, and streaking and being a striker going up and down the field um you're going to be a great footballer yeah. you're going to go as far as your talent will take you for us you know we want to make studio films we want to direct tv yeah. there's a lot of things that we yeah have we be managing like 100 plus you know, people we on like set, sets no? yeah. you know so mm -hmm. we have are getting comfortable with the responsibilities of building big set pieces and big productions and part of that is handling the press yeah. of how you're going to do a good film and you know try to make great films i tell filmmakers make films that you really love that you need to make exactly. that you think that is something that is so special to you because if you really love cinema even if you don't know everything and put yourself around talented people mm -hmm. and you have a vision you will make a good film because you 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 are holding on to this and take your time to make it. It's Don't right. just release it. Yeah, you can't rush make good sure things. that it's perfect yeah. for you because once it's out in the world, everyone gets to see it. So work on it. Even if it takes a year, two years, three years, work on your film so that when you release it, it's ex you're proud to have your name on it. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Yeah, you guys inspire me. You know, I wish I could be as good as you guys, but I'm on my way, right? I'm, I'm trying, right. I'm trying, right. you know? No, 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 hell, hell no. Nah. You guys are very good. That You guys are so pro. <laughs> hey, guys, this, uh, the day I have to grow up is all over the place, right? In yeah. Amazon, yeah. in many platforms, right? Amazon, Amazon Prime, Amazon, Roku, uh, Roku yeah. Flex. Yeah. 2B TV. 2B TV, um, it's on 2B TV, Zoom. wow. Wow, you guys are in a huge platform, my goodness. Amazing, guys. Let me, I got two more questions and then I'll let you guys go because we probably will have to do the before you go in another time, sure. okay, guys? Because it, it, the day I have to grow up is very interesting for me, as well as uh, before you go, which is really beautiful film as well. Uh, guys, as a filmmakers, uh, you guys are very pro. Uh, what is the, 
in the three phases that we have in filmmaking, pre-production, production, and post-production, which one is the one that we really have to hate? This, all of them that are important, right? They're all necessary, but which one is the one that we really have to, you know, work extremely hard? What do you think, guys? All of them, they are difficult. Don't get me wrong, all right? But what do you think is the one that is so necessary? <laughs> Post, because you, you know, I would say instinctively post production. You, yeah, mm -hmm. because there's three there's three versions of the film that exist, right? There's the one in pre production, the one that you're envisioning to make. There's the right. one in production, the one that you're making, right? And then there's the one in post, and that's the one that's made. That's the mm -hmm. one that's going out into the world, right? So right. the decisions that you make in post are the most essential. Because it's what you're gonna keep. It's what you're gonna keep. You're you're yeah. literally going from all the uh, all the potential footage right. into the actual footage that will show up. You're right. adding the music. You're coloring the film. You're making the edits, and you're reimagining the film. I think for for me, you know, when you ask me that question, mm. I think post production. Yeah. Post production, one hundred percent for me. Now I can only speak for myself. The one that I think. And maybe I can speak for Stefano. The one the that hardest. we love the most is production. I love production the most. Yeah, yeah. The most. Yeah. Yeah. Creating. I, mean, that, that's I the love best, principal right? photography. When you capture it's my favorite. lightning in a bottle, that's the best. I love that being on set. It's the most satisfying artistic. I love waking up in the morning. Yeah. I love having <laughs> coffee. I love meeting my crew. I love talking to the ADs. Yeah. I love having right. the assistant directors break, looking at the setups. Looking at the and, setups. Yeah. I love talking to the cinematographers, talking to the actors, or if it's a documentary, the real people. And I love finding the rhythm of yeah. a team, like a big family. That's right. Love, right. love, production. love production. Stake so high. I love the, the this experience of filming. It's, it's why, why we do it. I love principal photography. Yeah. Nice, nice answer. Hey, I'm very happy. Before my last question, guys, Finally, I got you guys, huh? Whoa, <laughs> now I can sleep well, you know? I was like, when am I gonna get those guys? Those guys are all over the place. They don't want to talk to this humble guy. They talk to Fox. Wait, oh, no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Time, it's a matter of time, it's it was, time. It was so always bad. important. Yeah. It was always important to always. us. We had to be in the same room because I, I know yeah. Laura could do it with you, but I wouldn't be available. I could do it with Best you, first, so yeah. but uh -huh. Laura wouldn't be available. And so, right. so this was the perfect, you know, perfect, perfect setup of, elements. of everything yeah. together. Um, you know, I just want to say for us, you know, I love the promotion that you're doing for your, for the festival. Amazing. Um, you know, I've been following you for the year, the past year and a half, the, the talkbacks that you have, the, 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 the programming that you the have, trailers, the trailers, trailers that you put up mm -hmm. for everyone, how you are focused yeah. on the filmmakers. That's exactly. the festival. That like you guys really care you care and it shows 100 yeah i'm a filmmaker you know and that's what i wanted I for a film festival that's what please do you select you select my film please place my poster at least right but many festivals right. don't do that but that's uh, i'm a filmmaker i want to be the different guys my last question you guys coming to barcelona what do you think yes yeah yeah yes. yeah Yes, we are going to come. Absolutely. We are definitely looking forward. You know, whenever those, whenever the dates, it's going to be in September. Is that right? Yeah, September. Yeah, 13 to 18. Yes. We're in. We're, we're in 100%. We're in 100%. If we're not, Absolutely. If we're not filming, we will take the time off because yes. we need a trip. We need, we a, vac <laughs> we need a vacation. <laughs> we need to I need to go to Barcelona. We need, we need a vacation and we need, need to just start going to the festivals in person. I need to see people in person. Yeah, exactly. I hate, I, I can't stand. I mean, listen, we've had. We can't stand online festivals. I don't know if I should exposure, say that. But no, no, it's it's I not. I can't stand not online. The way of the world I don't right like now. online festivals compared to real life. I yeah. love seeing films in the yeah. theaters, yeah. and I love yeah. to meet filmmakers yeah. at parties. That's I like right. to drink. Right. I like so, to eat. It's a social you know. I want to you know? meet them. And that's that's how you that's how you network with people. You meet them. In public that's public. right. That's what we're going to have in Barcelona. That's for sure. We have a slate of filmmakers from all over the place. They are willing to come just like you guys. So we're going to have fun, definitely. I'm Love easy, that. Darwin. Just ta <laughs> all we need are some tapas and, and some, some sangria. And some, and some sangria, sangria, right? Yes, that's my dream too. Hey, guys. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations on all your success. Guys, huh? you, and finally, Laura, give me a sign. Bye.